So, it's the big day, it's time to pick up your camper. Now, first thing we're gonna to have to look at is to make sure that your tow bar is fitted, you have a tow tongue, and it is ready for a hitch receiver. Also, check that your trailer plug is in good working condition. If picking up from a Platinum Campus showroom or from one of our dealers, the team will install the new Polyblock hitch receiver for you. However, if you're picking it up from one of our depots, you will need to bring along some tools, you know, something like a rattle gun or a big wrench to help you remove your tow ball and to install the new Polyblock hitch. Now, let's show you how that's done. So, here's some tips to get off your old tow ball and to install your new Polyblock hitch. The most easy way to do this, fingers crossed you may have a rattle gun at home, is to simply hold your tow ball, use the rattle gun, and off it comes. Now let's say that tow ball is just spinning in your hand and you can't get a good grab on it. Your next step is to use a pipe wrench or something similar to grab that tow ball, then use your rattle gun again and give that a crack. Let's say you don't have a rattle gun. All is good, just use a 300 mil or 12 inch wrench and it does the same thing. Now, depending on the age of your tow ball, it may be very, very tight. We've seen some very tight ones in our time and sometimes they just don't want to give. Look, it's time to get creative. Try some WD-40. If that doesn't work, it's time to head to the mechanic and get them to remove it for you. If they can't, I just hate to say it, but it's time to buy a new tongue. Now that we have the ball removed, it's time to install your new Polyblock hitch receiver. This is your Polyblock hitch receiver. This is a spring washer and that is your nut. Basically, we're going to put it onto the tow tongue and we tighten it until that spring washer compresses and becomes flat. So, without further ado, your first step is to put your new hitch receiver in and make sure, make sure those two little lips are securely on either side of the tongue. Put on your washer and add the nut. Due to the length of the thread, you unfortunately won't be able to use your rattle gun for this and you'll just have to use your wrench and just tighten it until that spring washer becomes flat. That way, it won't be as hard to remove next time. All Platinum campers come standard with an articulated polyblock hitch. Now what articulated means is that it has a full range of 360 degree motion this way and a great up and down motion as well. This is fantastic because when you're towing a camper behind you, this is a lot more forgiving than a standard tow ball. Also, in the event of a catastrophe like falling asleep while driving, something like this may be the difference between saving your life and not. If your camper, you know, unfortunately happens to spin, well, the good news is the car won't tip as well because the camper has a full range of motion. So, we believe polyblock hitches are the way to go. However, if you do prefer a tow ball, this is an option at the time of purchase. Now it's time for the fun part. We're gonna hook up your camper. I've got my colleague Mac here and he's gonna give us a hand. So, step one, come over to your polyblock hitch and remove the polyblock hitch pin. Next, jump into your tow vehicle and reverse up to your new hitch. Once you've got these two close, your next step is you need to align the polyblock hitch with the hitch receiver. Noticing that it's a little bit too low at the moment, use your jockey wheel to get it level. And once you're about right, you can pull your camper closer to the hitch. Once you've got your hitch inside the hitch receiver, chuck your pin in and then insert the safety pin on the bottom. The next step is to cross your chains and to connect them to your vehicle. Now the safety of you and your family is the most important part here. The chains are crossed over to provide a cradle in case the camper becomes loose from your car and falls towards the ground. If it falls, those chains will act as a cradle, stopping it from hitting the ground and potentially flipping over onto your car. So it's a very important and even a legal requirement. After your camper is hitched up and the chains are connected, it's time to connect your trailer plug. In our case, we're using a seven pin flat plug. You may have a round or a round large. Either way, they all work the same. Once plugged in, check your tower lights, your indicator lights, and that the brake controller is communicating with your vehicle. And while here, if you do have one, it's time to plug in the Anderson plug so that your batteries will charge while driving. Now that everything's connected, it's time to raise your jockey wheel so that you lower the camper and your tow vehicle can take the weight. When you lower the jockey wheel, make sure that the brackets are seated into these little grooves and that'll make sure that the wheel cannot move during travel. After this, 
pull the handle and flip up the jockey wheel. Make sure that the jockey wheel is facing you so that when you flip it up, it's sitting behind the stone guard facing out. Lastly, make sure that the handle is resting on your drawbar so that it doesn't have a chance of falling off and flipping around. One extra tip. If you lower your jockey wheel all the way down and you find that you can't flip it up because the camper's weight is still being supported by that wheel, what that means is that your toe tongue is not high enough. Now, there's a couple of options here. The most basic being, sometimes you may be able to flip that tongue and that may give you just a little bit of extra height and enough room to, to lift the jockey wheel. However, if that's not enough, then unfortunately, I would recommend getting an adjustable height tongue because that will be able to give you the extra height required for you to be able to lower that jockey wheel. Your next step is to disengage your handbrake by simply pushing in the button on the top and lowering it down. So I have my other colleague Aaron here for the last step. We're gonna check your wheel nuts. Now this is most likely the first trip away on your new camper and it is highly recommended, if not essential, that you double check the wheel nuts are torqued to the right setting. With alloy wheels, you need to make sure that they are torqued to 140 newton meters, and with steel wheels, that needs to be torqued to 150 newton meters. And one tip here is to tighten them up in a star pattern, top, bottom, left, right, etc. And this just makes sure that the tire is embedded onto the wheel hub properly. Now, it's important to note that this is a brand new trailer, and new wheel nuts and new wheel hubs will go through an embedding process. So, please check them at the first 50 kilometers, your first 100, your first 200, and after that, before every single trip you take away. The very last thing we're gonna do is check your tire pressures. In most cases, and when on the road, you wanna set that at 40 PSI. Now, if you're heading to the beach, you can lower that down to between 15 or 20 PSI, and that'll make for a much, much safer and easy drive on the sand. And now that all that's sorted, it's time to start your next adventure. Let's go.